morning on DC News Now. Another chilly start out there this morning. Many of us into the 30s at this hour, but 20s farther out towards the west. Later on today, a nice warm up back in the low to mid 50s. Not as warm tomorrow. Of all these details is coming up. Also coming up this morning, the Senate striking down the district's criminal code reform bill last night. How lawmakers are reacting. Was breaking overnight. Mitch McConnell waking up in the hospital after falling in a DC hotel. What we know about his condition. And Maryland Governor Wes Moore is making the state's final pitch for the new FBI headquarters. What's next this morning? The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. All right, your time right now at 6 o'clock on this Thursday morning. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Corey James. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. We're going to start you off with a live look outside on this Thursday morning. A nice, cool start to our morning. Jackie, what can people expect throughout the day? Yeah, well, later on today, we'll see those temperatures climbing back in the low to mid 50s. So quite a nice day overall, but we're just starting off a bit on the chillier side. Many of us are into the 30s at this hour, but we do see a few locations back into the 20s, and those are mainly back out towards the west. We're seeing the 20s out towards Kaiser and Cumberland, Woodstock, Luray is the coldest spot on the map right now, low 20s, but closer towards the district, starting off into the upper 30s in D.C., low 30s off towards Hagerstown and Frederick. That wind still seeing a breeze mainly out of the north northwest, not quite as strong as what we saw yesterday morning, but still that wind 5 to 10 miles per hour for much of the region. It's still enough to make it feel a little bit colder, feeling like we're into the upper 20s in D.C., mid 20s, what it feels like in Hagerstown, right into the 20s over towards Culpeper and Luray as well. So for the kids of the bus stop this morning, make sure that they are bundled up. We're going to be seeing those temperatures right into the low 30s over the next several hours at sunrise is coming up at 628 this morning and then we're going to be seeing those clear skies persisting not only through the morning but through the afternoon high pressures down towards our south that's keeping us quiet for the day today not so much tomorrow as we're tracking our next system but out there today quite nice low to mid 50s i'll certainly have more details coming up right now i do want to toss it over to tosin with the very latest on traffic how are those roads at this hour well jackie you can tell people are starting to make their way out on the roads here in dc 295 a lot of it is starting to see volume build up, but we're showing you Kenilworth Avenue at Eastern Avenue. You're seeing more people on the roads at this hour, showing you another part of DC. This is US 50 by 395 New York Avenue. As you can see, no issues in that area. If you're going to hop on 50 headed into Maryland, we're going to show you this is 495 by the National Harbor. As you can see, a lot of volume building at this hour, but no accidents to report. All right, Tosin, thank you. Your time right now is 602 on this Thursday morning and your no and go headline Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is waking up in the hospital after tripping and falling late last night. Now this comes four years after McConnell fell in his Kentucky home and fractured his shoulder. Randy Bass will have an update on his condition in just a few minutes. In a vote yesterday, the Senate struck down D.C.'s criminal code reform bill. It comes after the council overrode Mayor Bowser's veto and a failed vote in the House. Our Lex Warris is live this morning with a reaction from lawmakers on Capitol Hill and what's next for the bill. And less than a month after a deadly fire ripped through a Silver Spring high-rise building, another fire at that same apartment building. Management said in a letter to tenants that firefighters were able to put the fire out in a small kitchen. According to the letter, no one was injured. And officials from Maryland, including Governor Westmore, met yesterday with the General Services Administration to give their final pitch to bring the new FBI headquarters to the state. Today, the Virginia delegation will present their case. The new facility could bring an estimated 7,500 jobs to the community. All right, well, breaking overnight, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is in the hospital after a bad fall. Our Randy Bass has been following all of these breaking developments for us all morning long. So, Randy, what have we learned? Yeah, Tania, good morning. Right now, not much. Very few details are available at this point. We do know right now the 81-year-old senator was out at a private dinner last night at a hotel here in D.C., and that is when he fell. At this point, though, his representatives remaining pretty tight-lipped about his condition. Not clear how well he's doing this morning. Also not sure how long he could be away from his duties at the Capitol. But this is not his first bad fall. The senator back in 2019 tripped and fell at his home in Kentucky, fracturing his shoulder. He had to have surgery following that fall. And right now it's also not clear which DC hotel he was at or which hospital he was taken to for treatment. This is still a very new developing story. We'll bring you additional details as we get them in the newsroom. I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. All right, thank you, Randy. For the first time in 30 years, Congress voted to block a D.C. law from taking effect. In yeah, the Senate voting against the district's newly revised criminal code, D.C. News Now's Lex Wars is live at the U.S. Capitol this morning. And Lex, people in the district, they are not happy that this happened. 
Yeah, that's right. Even the people who were against this bill say that they are just as against Congress interfering in local matters. And what it really comes down to here is that fight for D.C. statehood. Now, hundreds were rallied outside of the Capitol before the Senate cast their votes to call for Congress to keep its hands off D.C., but in a historic 81 to 14 vote, the Senate moved to block the law anyway. Now there were concerns over penalties that were changed in the law. And while some said it was looser on crime, others argued it was actually tougher. Well, Mayor Bowser was one of the people who was against the bill, but still did not want Congress acting on local affairs. She actually spoke about what was going on in Congress yesterday afternoon before that vote was taken. Here's what she had to say. I am not happy um, that the Congress is intervening in our laws. I am not happy uh, about this discussion at all. Uh, and I hope that, um, and it was my, my fervent hope, uh, that my concerns with the crime bill would have been addressed locally. Um, but what I am, what we should all be prepared to do is to t stop talking about a dead bill and get to work to get it right. Well, the resolution now heads to the president's desk to be signed. And while President Biden does have the power to veto this resolution and what Congress and the House have passed, he already said if it did pass through Congress, he would not veto it. Live in Washington, I'm Lex Juarez, DC News Now. All right, Lex, thank you. Tom, right now with 605 developing this morning, several police departments across Prince George's County and D.C. are partnering to combat crime. The department held a meeting yesterday to discuss trends and how to address those issues. Now, officials say this allows investigators from various jurisdictions to work together to reduce crime and close cases. Police hope sharing information and resources will help tackle the growing problem. There's uh, different criminal justice databases that um, other agencies have that we currently don't have. So hopefully we can adapt some of those same um, technologies and databases and use it for our agency as well. The meetings are scheduled to take place once a month. Officials are also encouraging people to speak up and report crime anonymously. We don't really have a lot of federal, you know, buildings here. You know, Virginia has them, BC has them. People across Maryland pushing for the new FBI headquarters to be stationed in Prince George's County. Yesterday, Governor Westmore brought up a large group of officials to the General Services Administration, which is expected to decide soon where the new site will land in Virginia or Maryland. Today, the Virginia delegation will get to showcase their argument for why the FBI headquarters belongs to Springfield. While there is no deadline for when that decision has to be made, the debate has been ongoing for months now. Governor Moore has been pushing for the headquarters to be in Maryland since he took office. He says he is not afraid to use President Biden and Biden's promise of racial equity to swing things in Maryland's favor. Given the racial makeup of Prince George's County, some are saying this would be a great way to improve race relations between the U.S. government and African Americans. We know the history of the FBI, you know, with, with our people and things of that nature. You know, if, if there was any way to repair some of that, this would be the way to do it. And we're very serious when we say that Maryland is the best possible site for the FBI on every single criteria. Officials also say building the new headquarters in Maryland would be much cheaper than building it in Virginia. Time right now coming up on 610 New this morning. Prosecutors say they will not file charges against a six year old accused of shooting his teacher in Newport News, Virginia. Now, police say the boy shot his first grade teacher, Abby Zwarner, with his mother's gun. It happened back in January inside their classroom. Zwarner survived the shooting and no one else was hurt. Prosecutors say the boy would not have the competency to understand the legal system or the charges. There's still no decision on whether any adults will face charges. The six year old boy's mother says the gun was locked and secured inside a closet. And we continue to follow developments in that deadly tanker crash last weekend in Frederick County, Maryland. The driver of the truck died at the scene and a nearby home was also destroyed. The family in that home says the American Red Cross stepped in to help them and help them stay at a nearby hotel. But the timeline for that stay is coming to an end. The Frederick American Red Cross says the length of the time they can help depends on the size of the disaster and the funds that are available. We operate on the generosity of the, of the American people, right? And so people donate um, every day. They might be a recurring donor. They might be a foundation or a family who wants to do something to help. And so we take that money that's um, either given for where it's needed most or specifically for disaster response and recovery. 
The family tells DC News now that they are working with their insurance company to figure out what to do in terms of permanent housing. Time right now 610. We're learning more details this morning about a second fire that happened at a Silver Spring high rise apartment building. That's right. It's the same high rise where a woman was killed nearly three weeks ago in another fire. Management of the arrived Silver Spring apartments told tenants a second fire happened last week. Management says it was contained to a kitchen. Last month's fire started on the seventh floor and a 25 year old woman died in that fire. The building did not have automatic sprinklers or fire extinguishers. It was not required when the building was built. It's really disturbing because, you know, a fire can happen at any moment. Every apartment should have a fire extinguisher. It should be like a basic necessity. One Maryland state delegate has introduced a bill to improve safety, like requiring every unit in high rise buildings to have a fire extinguisher if there is no automatic sprinkler system. It has been two months without bus services for riders living and working in Loudoun County, and it feels like they could potentially be going more time without them running. Keolis, the company that runs the buses, says negotiations are at a standstill with workers who are still on strike. Now, the company's last offer included a 10% pay raise, plus a 4% raise after every year. As the stalemate continues, riders are getting more tired. It makes for a pretty exhausting commute between working um, you know, your eight, nine, 10 hour day, and then also commuting. I would much rather pay more for the bus service, which is much more comfortable. It, um, it takes me directly into DC. It doesn't have all of those Metro stops that the Metro has. It is unclear what the next steps are or when the strike will end.